Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. With this plastic ball and a tub of water, let's just have a, a look at the model of the globe Earth and the glue that is supposed to make the whole heliocentric model stick together. And that is, of course, the idea that gravity is some kind of external force that uh, allows us to believe and perceive what we know is actually physically impossible to uh, uh, stick all around the outside of a sphere. Of course, we have to imagine that this is uh, a ball in space, and then, of course, we have no up and down in space, but then on a ball, down is towards the center of the globe. So this is just a perception, okay? Gravity as an external force created by the mass of the, of the Earth, or uh, gravity said to be a force creating weight, really is just a perception that allows us to perceive this otherwise physically impossible model of us sticking to the outside of a sphere. It may seem very simplistic, but really I'd like to try and demonstrate what really is the only thing that we can physically prove uh, as and measure. So we know that, of course, uh, if we drop the ball through the air, it's going to fall at a rate of about 9.8 meters per second per second. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that this rate of acceleration is a constant for the mathematicians to then base all their equations on and then claim that because something with a mass will drop through a vacuum or a medium that is of zero density at this rate of acceleration, then uh, this is somehow proof that we have an external force that creates weight or creates up and down. First of all, let's just remember that up and down in any medium uh, will really depend on the relative density of the mass in that medium. Okay, we know this will fall through the air because it has a mass that is more dense than the air. If this uh, was a helium balloon, then we create an upward force in the medium of air. We would also have that upward force in the medium of water, okay? It doesn't mean that it's opposing gravity. The fact that you, you just create an upward force with a mass that is less dense than the medium it is in, okay? But here we have a downward force in the medium of air because this is heavier than the medium of air. Okay, so the idea that uh, we have things being attracted to the center of a spherical Earth is just an idea, it's an assumption. And the fact that it will fall at a particular rate really has nothing to do with the mass of the Earth. You still can't go and uh, confirm this assumption or explanation in the heliocentric model for gravity by weighing the Earth or, or actually seeing inside the Earth to know how dense it actually is or, or its actual mass, yeah? So it's just a perception, all right? So we know it will fall through the air or it will rise in the air depending on its relative density. Now what happens when it hits the water? Of course, it floats, okay? So what I try, want to try and get across, okay, is that the water is now a different medium so everything changes. We have this idea that you still have this constant force of gravity pulling the, blue, the ball down towards the center of the Earth. No, now that it's on or in the medium of water, it now is relative to the medium of water. It's gone through the air because it's more dense than the air, and now it hits water, and now we're talking about a different medium. So you cannot measure this continuing downward force. People will tell you that buoyancy is uh, a direct result of gravity. No, in, that's not the case. In the equations, you might still consider that there's a downward force because this thing has a weight in the medium of air, but really it has nothing 
there is no downward force there's only an upward force and you have to you have to push this down quite hard to make it go down there is only an upward force and it's got nothing to do with any other downward force acting on the water or anything else yeah again bear in mind that uh, we are told to assume that it is the earth's specific mass in a spherical volume that creates the weight that you and I have on this earth okay uh, and that uh, if for example this was the moon with uh, less mass then you would apparently weigh less on the moon you would still have the same mass yes but you would weigh less because of this attract okay so we all get that we all understand the theory of, of course the proof we have been given is astronauts bouncing around on the moon and that has been proven over and over again to be so ridiculously fake that we cannot take this seriously so there is no proof whatsoever apart from the uh the fake moon landings to say that uh, uh the mass of the earth or the mass of any spherical object creates a different kind of weight depending on that mass yeah so get that assumption out of your head because it's nothing that's ever been proven it's just an explanation all right so what we have okay is the idea that the specific mass of the earth is what creates weight yet when it comes to buoyancy in water if the mass of the earth is what creates weight then whatever is cre creating an opposing buoyant force should work on the same principle so really this ball should float differently in this water depending on, on how massive the body of water is if you are to assume that it is the earth's specific mass pulling the ball down then anything opposing that gravity created by mass or weight created by mass should have used the same principles yeah but of course we know that this could be a tub this size it could be a lake uh, and the ball will float in the same manner there is no difference in the buoyant force created by the water while we still have to believe that it is the mass of the earth that creates a gravitational force okay so that's again an explanation that is compartmentalized and does not fit with anything else that has anything to do with the natural physics that we see and uh, around us so when it comes to uh, this you know seeing a feather and a ball being dropped through a vacuum at the same rate of acceleration and assuming that this means there is a constant force this really is just the fact that we are a vacuum is a medium of almost zero density so anything with any mass that is greater than that medium will fall through it even a helium balloon will fall through a vacuum okay so you've created a medium that has pretty much zero density so you can't make anything rise in that vacuum that's all there is to it yeah so you you just by putting a mass whether it's a feather or a lead balloon a lead ball sorry uh, they will fall because they are simply heavier they have more mass than the medium surrounding them a vacuum just cannot support them yeah but here of course the water can easily support this this ball which is which is fairly light yeah but the same as uh, a feather and um, a ball will fall through a vacuum if you take this metal car it will fall through the air and it will fall through the water quite easily yeah in the same way that uh, an object of any mass will fall through the air it's just that the water puts up slightly more resistance so the ball will float but anything that is way more dense than the water will drop through it yeah okay so again all we can ever observe on this earth 
is relative density. Yeah? To assume or have an explanation that uh, appears to fit the model of a globe Earth and us being able to stick to it because the mass of the Earth creates weight is just that. It's just an assumption. It doesn't really reflect or go together with everything that we see and experience and observe in our physical reality. It's just not physics. Okay? So when people talk about the heliocentric model and the glue of gravity that sticks it all together, it's just explanations. You can come up with any explanation you want. There is no actual proof. Yeah? Try to understand what I'm pointing out. Thank you very much.